and they're quite large and a well-known RippleNet partner. And what do I mean by quite large? Well, 4 billion bank accounts and 500 million wallets. And then once there's clarity, they turn it over to on-demand liquidity, and that's all she wrote. It's Kevin Cage here with another XRP update. We're going to be going through some rapid-fire news today and going over the XRP price chart, observing how other assets have reacted and what this could mean for the price action of XRP. We're going to be kicking things off with the XRP price chart. I think those of you that stick around will find this beyond interesting. So XRP price chart, basic Fibonacci retracement on the weekly swing high, swing low, wick to wick. You can see a double bottom at this level. And we're sitting just below the 50% retracement with the market doing a slight pullback today as Bitcoin is coming down back to 48K after reaching 50,000. Now, something interesting to note are a few possibilities. And this is what we've been talking about for weeks on end for those of you that tune in. And what we can see is this. XTC for all of you trade finance fans, great asset. Swing high, swing low, wick to wick. I was an early buyer into this when it was XTCE. I don't own nearly as much now, so I'm kind of kicking myself. Same thing with Luna. But as we can see, swing high, swing low. And Solana, there's a big narrative change occurring with this one as well. Swing high, swing low, wick to wick. And what do we see? Well, coincidentally, they all did what we've been watching. The 1618 extension right there, wick. Right there, wick, two wicks. And then right there, pretty damn close. Now, there's also a big narrative change occurring with Cointelegraph, okay, and all of these big, essentially media outlets and Coindesk. Institutional investors bet big on Solana while Bitcoin outflows persist. Now, although Solana is awesome, there's a few things I'm looking at. Now, even if Solana goes up to the 4.236, my ROI, I'm not really super interested in. Um, it already exploded. So I'm going to be focusing on assets that are down here. An example of such would be XRP, especially if it does actually come down here first before pushing up. And the reason I said that is, look, we have XTC coming up to the 786. Then it crashes down to the 382, if not a little lower with that wick at the 236 and then blasts up. Same end result. Whereas we have Terra Luna actually just forming this beautiful cup, you know, hits the 702 like blockchain backer covers beautifully. We crash and then what happens? We get a very aggressive recovery blasting through the 236, golden cross on the 8 and 21 exponential moving average and it is game time. So there's a few possibilities. Do we hit crash and it's a really bumpy road or is it smooth sailing and we go parabolic? These are some of the things I'm looking at, but nonetheless, I believe and not financial advice, but I believe that we absolutely have a great shot to blast past. Please understand Cardano is highly correlated to XRP and Cardano's all-time high was $1.33 in 2018. $1.33. Cardano is well above $2 and hit $3. More than doubling its all-time high price. XRP's all-time high price was $3.00. What do you think happens long term in this market as ODL corridors are building? Flare Networks is going to be going live shortly. There's going to be XRP that is minted on the platform is FXRP. There's a lot of excitement right now with the lawsuit. And although there is uncertainty, I get excited. And when people are afraid, calm people can make massive amounts of money. So we're going to refer back to this in a few weeks and observe how all of this plays out. And of course, I encourage you to go through a bunch of other assets, see how they're reacting. Some are in route to the 1618 and some are actually all the way up here, as I showed in yesterday's video. And of course, now HBAR got that nice little push that we discussed last night. But that's the power of doing a top down analysis as I share on Patreon, reading the RSI properly. OK, so we're familiar with the founder of the XRP Ledger, one of the co-founders, Arthur Brito. Funny enough, the founder and president of PolySign, and of course their subsidiary, has a banking charter to do standard custody for institutional investors, meaning trillions and trillions of dollars, even the capital markets. Notice it says right here, capital markets. Driving the use of digital assets? And who just did an interview and spoke extremely highly of XRP saying it's far superior to Bitcoin? Jack McDonald, the CEO of Standard Custody. UBS executive. Legends of Industry, my guy Tim Keeney, and of course Antoine Nett. David Schwartz is a legend, he needs no introduction. Now, Bank XRP, this is an absolute must follow in the space, along with these two attorneys, my guys Johnny Deaton and Jeremy Hogan, great people. Bank XRP sharing this, dated back in 2015 of September, Ripple's Arthur Brito. Ripple Labs does not want to provide financial advice or give anyone false expectations for the value of XRP. Seems like they're covering themselves nicely. 
Feel free to read this or screenshot this. Remember, this is Abrito, the man, the myth, the legend, the ghost. And although he's in some of the highest positions in the world of finance, he's not really mentioned in the Ripple SEC lawsuit. Pretty strange, right? There sure are a lot of weird coincidences in this space. Just like Brian Brooks of the OCC for the United States government, the former acting comptroller of currency for the United States, no big deal, literally made a prediction, and I showed you in yesterday's video, and that's an older clip, saying that XRP or Ripple will get settlements. That was his prediction. On the distribution of the assets so that it has clarity going forward. How much more clear can this get? Arthur Brito goes on to say, I currently believe the future primary use cases of cryptocurrencies will be bridge currency. Yes, because he understands that banks, the dinosaurs, are still going to take years to even understand and build the infrastructure, let alone the regulation to get everything in place. So XRP still has tremendous upside for the next decade. Despite your beliefs, that's where we're at. And of course, cryptocurrency goes way beyond just cross-border payments. But Ripple, the company, understands that they are one of the main players tackling this issue. And getting dominance each and every day in terms of Ripple adoption for Ripple Nets. And then once there's clarity, they turn it over to on-demand liquidity, and that's all she wrote. Also, an investment vehicle, speculative for now, but the idea is, and we're lunatics that believe that utility will bring higher prices in due time year over year, because utility brings volume. Utility brings buying pressure, settlements of payments, or any type of transaction. Additionally, I believe XRP has the potential to very well fulfill these roles. And just so you know, Bank XRP shared this originally back in 2018. Just a great researcher, great guy. But anyways, as the narratives continue, notice PayPal, Venmo, they don't list XRP. The typical mainstream exchanges do not list XRP. How can I buy XRP? I use Caleb and Brown, or you can use Bitru and Uphold. All three of those exchanges are down below. I prefer Caleb and Brown because they have every single asset that you can name with direct swaps. And I just like working smart, not hard. And when my assets are with Caleb and Brown, they're actually secured offline and they're fully insured. So that's just something I prefer, specifically when I do over-the-counter buys. Because crypto is already risky enough. I've heard too many horror stories of people getting SIM swapped or, or even them losing an account or even hackers being able to get into their account, even if they utilize a Google authenticator. So no, thank you. Notice flow by assets. What do they do? They still call it Ripple. This bias has got to stop. Typical headlines across the board. American banker Ripple's blueprint to modernize Europe's payment infrastructure. Now, blockchain goes way beyond just cross-border payments. And I know people roll their eyes like, oh, come on, this has been happening for years. Wake up call. Banks are still using 40-year-old technology. Ripple the company, an extremely high-valued private company that may go public someday, is literally holding the hands of central banks and walking them to school. You can go back in the past. Look, in 2015, 2016, they've been educating central banks for several years, teaching them about central bank digital currencies and how they could even implement them. And then later showing how XRP actually provides that role as the bridge asset, whether it's digital, CBDCs, or even today. So XRP can plug in to the current infrastructure in the future infrastructure. They are future-proofing. Food for thought. Also, Bitru, here's something interesting built on Stellar XLM backed by the company Ripple through Spring. Remember, Spring, aka today, it's Ripple X. This is specifically focused on developments on the XRP ledger. That is what we want. We want building. We want developers. Interest circulating around this ecosystem. Stronghold looks like something Bitru users would love to have in their portfolios. What would you guys think about putting it in to the BTR vote soon? It's pretty interesting. Perhaps foreshadowing what's yet to come. Just like we got Deke and John Wick sharing. Sounds like all the money. Now remember, Evan Schwartz also says a lot of things too, like all the money with Interledger Protocol. And we have Chris Larson, executive chairman of Ripple. And this is years ago. Ripple is working on a replacement for Swift. And yes, Swift, five, six trillion dollars a day. There's 20 trillion dollars plus, even on the low end, 10 trillion dollars plus in float that does nothing. When XRP unlocks 10 trillion plus, 20 trillion plus, what do you think happens to the value? Ripple's working on a replacement for Swift. How to get all of the payment providers onto Interledger protocol and, and how to use XRP, not Bitcoin, is on-demand liquidity. Because it's one of the most efficient networks that exists today with actual adoption that is plugged into the existing financial infrastructure with some of the largest tech providers that have already had proof of concepts for several years. This is tried and true and something that central banks will and are adopting today. We can see TH Mick, thank you man for tagging me down here as well, but we can see shout out to King Solomon for finding that crazy patent for synchrony. 
And as we can see, he found another patent on Google, so King Solomon inspired a deeper look at the patents that Synchrony, one of the largest U.S. credit card issuers, 65 million accounts, directly mentioning XRP in the patent as a settlement mechanism between eBay, Amazon, PayPal, essentially all the groups that use Synchrony. Not a coincidence, FYI, for anybody surprised, XRP is the standard. This one is some interesting verbiage. Court of Settler, Jason, sent it to XRP Owl. He has not seen it yet either. Amazing stuff. Now, maybe he has. I have not checked anybody's videos lately. I've been so busy. U.S. patent application, distributed ledger system for automated claim adjudication. You have the names, you have the dates, filed back in 2020 of December. And mentioning Court of Settler, which is specifically agnostic. And yes, coincidentally, Corda's first settlement asset or mechanism named was XRP, then Swift GPI, and then a whole group of other assets. And of course, we still do speculate how much XRP R3 actually was awarded. I know that they were promised billions in the past. I'd assume they still have at least 1 billion XRP, maybe 1% of the float. But that is speculation on my end. In my opinion, healthy speculation. Matthew L-I-N-Y, telecom sector would make the perfect fit for Ripple-enabled platform. Chris Larson, could you share any interesting events that happened in this area since the publishing of this paper? Thank you. Have a great day. Check this out. Financial Inclusion Global, back in 2017, telecommunication standardization sector of ITU, the International Telecommunication Union. And now we have Ripple Labs right here, along with Greg Kidd, who owns 1% of all XRP, early investor in Twitter, founder of Global ID. His background's huge, and one of the reasons that Ripple, right away within their first five employees, were already having talks at the Federal Reserve years ago is because Greg Kidd, because he was an advisor there. Now, Chris Larson, former CEO, current executive chair of Ripple, is right here side by side with Greg Kidd within this ITU in 2017. And people still underestimate how well these people are connected. Also, Rath Economist on Thursday, Ripple partner Boss Revolution partnered with another Ripple partner, TerraPay, to expand their reach. Boss Revolution is IDT's remittance application. IDT trialed XRapid, today ODL, which uses XRP, and is listed as a Ripple partner. What a small world. Here's the press release just 10 days ago. As you can see, this partnership's going to empower customers in the U.S. to connect with family and friends, starting with mobile wallets in Senegal and Benin, digital interoperable payment networks. Our customers in the U.S. can now send money to friends and family in Senegal, Benin, and 36 other countries, including over 300,000 points of payment. This is from IDT's SVP of Consumer Payments. Keep an eye on TerraPay for international remittances, of course, and they're quite large and a well-known RippleNet partner. And what do I mean by quite large? Well, 4 billion bank accounts and 500 million wallets. So yeah, kind of large. Spanning across 79 countries and 153 sending countries. These are payment highways, deepening engagement and adding more participants to a cohesive financial ecosystem. Beautiful. Also have to highlight this. This is a well-known Ripple partner. This is Finabler. And they've actually been rebranded Wiz Financial. I'm not going to remember that. Set to merge with BFC Bahrain. As you can see, Rath Economen originally sharing this, Prism Group AG and Royal Strategic Partners back in December bought this Ripple partner, Finabler. Then they ended up buying the Ripple partner, BFC. And then August 6th, just recently, all of this was merged under one payments company, Wiz Financial. Wiz Financial. So I'm going to have to try to remember this group. Too much information out there. Now, why am I talking about this? Oh, partners of partners. Listen up. The deal creates the largest remittances services and currency exchange group in the MENA region, M-E-N-A. This is the Middle East in Northern Africa region. And get this, drum roll please, becomes the only operator with a direct presence in all six GCC countries. A quote from Wiz Financial themselves. BFC Bahrain, the leading money transfer and currency exchange company in Bahrain, in this acquisition of Ripple Partners creates a regional powerhouse with licenses to operate in over 30 countries. And yes, they joined Wiz Financial with activity in over 170 countries. The MENA region, direct presence in all six GCC countries. This is huge. Keep an eye on this. We can see Ripple partner Credit Agricole, so thank you Mbiagi for the tag, confirms Marco Polo membership. 
This is all about blockchain trade finance, related to R3, of course. And this Ripple partner, Credit Agricole, is the world's largest cooperative financial institution. And we've talked about them. We've seen their actual CEO discuss Ripple and leave a lot of positive reviews on the Ripple Insights article and actual live footage of them discussing Ripple. And this bank had total assets back in 2019 of over $2 trillion. This bank's also a member of Comgo, a commodity trade finance network. And here you can see the full list of Marco Polo members, including Alpha Bank. This is Russia's. Germany's Commerce Bank, which we've discussed before, and Alpha Bank has some super interesting ties, by the way. I know a lot of great researchers have shared this in the past. Bank of America, RippleNet, Bangkok, BNP Paribas, pretty interesting, DNB, BNY, Bradesco, which is Ripple as well. They got that Ripple Award, remember? MasterCard, MUFG, Ripple, National Bank of Fujaira, Ripple, National Australia Bank, Natixis. I can say with absolute certainty, we have gone over the past three years for Ripple News. We've gone over all of these partners, except maybe OP Financial, Bayern, and maybe Bangkok. Everything else we have covered in actual videos and showed XRP ties. Also, Philippines, more active than ever. One of the locations that actually has live on-demand liquidity flows using XRP for financial institutions. Philippines Union Bank taps Hex Trust to test digital assets custody. They're looking to tap into the digital asset market as institutional and customer interest grows. Next stage will involve rolling out a custody service for bank's customers. Union Bank, one of the island's top 10 banks by total assets, said it is fully compliant in its latest offering with the Philippines Central Bank. BSP, the Philippines Central Bank will remember that just like MAS is, of course, Singapore. And then SAMA is of Saudi Arabia, SAMA. And last year, Hex Trust actually teamed up with R3 to offer banking clients another option for issuing security tokens, which are going to be massive, using Corda. And yes, we discussed Corda in the beginning of this video. Hex Trust has offices in Singapore and Hong Kong. So the HKMA, Central Bank, and then MAS for Singapore, Monetary Authority of Singapore. I hope that's helpful. We have SKU by Coinbase sharing this. Bitcoin options, open interest, August 27th, 2021 expiry. You can see all the puts in the red, along with the blues that are the calls. We have all these articles still circulating. It makes me want to facepalm because it feels like we've been waiting 84 years. But yes, I believe the wait will be worth it. Matthew L-I-N-Y, distributed ledger tech could improve U.S. payments. This is the Fed team back in 2020 of August. Well, the project was on Hyperledger, but no indication that XRP was experimented with. FYI, Ripple is one of the earliest members to join Hyperledger, though. But what we do know is, of course, it is interoperable with the network, future proofing. Which is super interesting, and although we may not see direct mentions of XRP here, we obviously see XRP directly mentioned by some of the biggest groups in the world all the time. Even just look at that recent synchrony patent found by King Solomon. You can't make this stuff up. The largest credit card issuer. Not naming other assets. Naming XRP as settlements. What? And then you got the typical guy saying, but, but, but XRP's a dollar. For now. Shout out to Crypto Cobra here and Digital Asset Investor for sharing this. We have Kristalina, the director of the International Monetary Fund, with a new press release. The IMF governors approve a historic... $650 billion SDR allocation of the special drawing rights. Now, some people are going to roll their eyes, and those people have not done their research. Why? Do you remember Mr. Ross Lekow for the IMF on stage with Brad Garlinghouse discussing XRP or a crypto asset actually being potentially able to be part of the SDR? Now, of course, whether or not that happens, XRP is going to explode in my opinion, but I thought this was just another coincidence. And we can see the current SDR exchange rate right here. And of course, XRP at 70 cents here on the open. It's 7048. This is at 7022 per the US dollar chart. Wow. Okay, we are going to be finishing up with this. Now, please pay attention to the next video. I want to break things down specifically. But once upon a time, DAG Constellation, when we were buying it under two pennies and we were screaming it from the rooftops on YouTube for several months, and it's gone over 10x and 20x since that point and it was a sub $50 million market cap. I have my favorite long-term holds right here, and yes, I do hold other assets, FYI, but these are some of my bigger long-term holds that I hold. Smaller caps, more established assets, Flare is yet to go live with all the airdrops coming. This asset, DAG Constellation, that has some huge news coming, specifically from the Department of Defense, is almost in the top 100 now, without ever even being on major exchanges. Yes, it's available on KuCoin, but I'm talking Binance, Coinbase, the tier one exchanges. 
But what do you think happens? The market cap is still below $1 billion, and this is per CoinGecko. If you go to CoinMarketCap, it shows an even smaller market cap. We've been watching this asset multiply, creating higher highs each and every day. And it's almost like this fractal is doing what XRP did in 2017 during that bull run. For those of you that have been around since then, or even just look at the price chart. Now to point out API 3, under a $200 million market cap compared to almost a $1 billion today. Of course, Constellation has some great assets being built, such as ads of Alchemy Exchange and Lattice of Lattice Exchange. Keep an eye on those layer zero tokens. Because if you think the network is appreciating in value, what do you think the other tokens that are built on Constellation's Hypergraph Transfer Protocol are going to do? Remember how everything built on Ethereum started going up? Ethereum started going up in value? And then all these ERC-20 tokens went up in value as well? And now we have API3, one of my favorite oracles, doing things differently. I don't think it's a threat to Chainlink per se. This is just doing first-party oracles backed by some of the biggest groups in the world, and nobody's paying attention to it. And nobody's paying attention to an asset when it's just flat and just sitting there. Everybody wants to buy into a pump. I don't buy into pumps. I buy way before the pump. And just remember, we've been talking about API 3 since it was under a $50 million market cap. Since it's under this $150 million market cap, they reached their staking goals and there's big things coming. Just like Fire Dragon, a great XRP community member goes on to say, just wait till it hits those top exchanges. Hold on to anything bolted down. Why do I think that this is going to hit a top exchange? And what do you think happens to this asset? Does it hit a, does it hit a $1 billion market cap someday? In my opinion, yes. Because the founding entity behind this group basically owns Coinbase, owns Kraken, owns a lot of the big exchanges. And another big entity behind this is the founding entity of Cardano itself. And let's look at Cardano, ADA, 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 tomato, tomato. This value of ADA has absolutely went parabolic, well over a 100x since its three cent price last year. As Cardano and its whole organization has more purchasing power, what do you think they will be doing for their specific investments? This is what I consider to be part of my fundamental analysis, also known as common sense. But anyways, we're going to be watching the XRP price chart. I'll be watching everybody complain on Twitter, as always, when everything happens. Look at all these wicks. This is part of the market. And then when you zoom out, you can actually see we're in a beautiful ascending channel, creating higher highs. I don't sweat the small stuff because it is all small stuff, and I wait to see what kind of moves we'll be doing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and sub. All links are in the video description. Feel free to follow me on TikTok, and I will catch you in the next one.